Budget insurance. Affordable, because you can't afford not to. Hello. Today I'm going to tell you about a car which has lots of space for you and your family, a huge boot, and it's extremely fuel efficient. It's not a diesel, and it's not an SUV. And this is it, a sedan. Do you guys remember sedans? Anyone, any South Africans out there remember these things? You know, that we all drove pretty much most of our lives and now we all drive SUVs. But I am here to make a case for the sedan as a great family car and a great daily practical vehicle. But before I continue, remember the Cars of Cosa has the largest selection of new and used cars anywhere online in South Africa. Check it out. Dream Search Drive. Ha! Got the slogan in to my dialogue. Definitely going to get a bonus this year. Right, the Toyota Corolla Hybrid has arrived on the South African market very recently. It will be built here soon. This particular one that I'm driving uh, was built overseas, so it has a couple of little interesting nuances, which I'll take you through. But Toyota South Africa have spent a lot of money tooling up and modernizing their Durban plant so that they can build this and the Corolla Cross Hybrid in South Africa. And I think that has helped bring the price down because this car is very well priced. So I hear you asking, Chiro, tell us the price. Well, that's what I'm about to do. 419,000 Rand gets you one of these. Now, when you consider that a top spec Polo is 404,000 Rand these days, this is quite a lot of car for your money. And I'll tell you why I think it's good value. A couple of reasons. Now, I think some of the reasons are a little bit difficult to quantify and qualify and describe. And one of them is the ride quality. This is an extremely comfortable car. It's been tuned really, really well. The suspension is nice and soft. It's not sporty. This is not a Nürburgring hero. But funnily enough, I didn't have plans to go do laps of the Nürburgring today. I just want a comfortable car to get to work in. And that's what this car does brilliantly. We're talking Lexus levels of ride quality here. It's super, super impressive. Now in the motoring industry, we talk about NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness. And luxury cars try to dial out those elements so that you have a nice, relaxing experience and you get to your destination without being exhausted. And hybrids really have good NVH levels, especially this one. The engine's very quiet, especially, well, of course, when you're in battery mode. So there's no noise, the vibrations are dealt with because you've got nice high sidewall tires and you've got soft suspension. And then in terms of harshness, well, there's very little vibration, very little noise coming from the drivetrain. And so this is a very calming vehicle to be in. And then, of course, there is the mega benefit of fuel consumption. Now, I've been driving this car for about a month, and no matter how I drive it, no matter where I drive it, it averages 5.2 liters to the 100. Right now, I'm actually averaging 5.0. That's it. I mean, Toyota does claim 3.5 to the 100. I think that's a bit optimistic and a bit ambitious. I think you driving it every day, you're going to get 5 to the 100. Now, do the maths on that, because 5 to the 100 is a nice round number. It means that for every liter of fuel, you're doing 20 kilometers. 20! That's a very nice thing, especially given the price of petrol these days. Ah, it's so painful, it's like being stabbed in your wallet, in your bank account. It's awful and it's only going to get worse. So you do want a fuel efficient car and that's what this car does for you. And I can hear you saying, Chiro, I've got a small turbo diesel engine and I'm averaging better than that. Even actually, in, to BMW's credit, the 320D averages around the same. But here's where I think hybrid trumps diesel. Emissions. Diesel emissions are quite dirty, especially in South Africa because important tech like the diesel particulate filter is taken off the cars that we get from Europe and so the diesel emissions are even a bit dirtier down here in SA. And there's a reason why diesels are being banned from a lot of European cities and why they'll continue to be banned. 
it's because these emissions are not great for human health. I do think we need to transition away from diesel and that makes hybrid tech in my opinion, a great bridging technology between what we have now, the internal combustion era, and the upcoming electric vehicle era. Part of the efficiency of the car actually comes down to the tires. These are Dunlop NSAVs, they're very low friction, not the sort of tire you want to take around a racetrack, not very grippy, but they really do help bring down your fuel consumption. And these wheels, let me show you a little secret. That's gone well. Um, they're hubcaps. <laughs> Thankfully, there was nothing for me to try and pull off in the interior. It's fairly standard Toyota fare in here, but the materials are of a high quality and everything has been put together really well. The instruments are a slick combination of digital and analog with a large central display, which offers tons of information about your vehicle. As I'm sure you've noticed, the seats are cloth, which perhaps doesn't look as premium as leather, but I found them to be super comfortable, especially over long distances. The rear seats fold through to the boot, but a Annoyingly, there is only a release here on the seat shoulder and none in the boot, which would have been more convenient. I promised you a big boot and I'm about to deliver. Remote unlock from the key. And look at that, using our traditional cooler box test, it's, it's disappeared in there. That's a good sized cooler box. I reckon this is about a, an eight cooler box boot this, and there's still quite a lot of height, and there's a toolbox and a spare wheel underneath there, and the rear seats fold 60-40 so you can slide a bicycle in or a kayak or whatever you want, really. Now show me a similarly sized SUV that has a boot that big. I challenge you. So if you've never driven a hybrid, let me take you through the experience. And I'll start by explaining the tech. Hanging off the back of the motor, something called a power splitter, and then attached to that is a little generator. And the generator has teeth on it, it's like a big sort of cogwheel. And then the motor, the electric motor, sort of blends into those teeth, it's mounted a little bit to the side. And then the generator is connected to the transmission, which in this case is a CVT. Now, CVT means that the car always has the right gear ratio for the engine speed and the road speed. Now it's incredible how much power and torque you get out of the little electric motor. I mean, it's about this big, right? It's about a, maybe the same diameter as a big watermelon. You know, compare that to a big four-cylinder engine. The four-cylinder engine in here is a 1.8 liter on an Atkinson cycle, and it has been tuned very much for efficiency. Now. The car does most of the thinking on its own. You don't have to do anything really. It manages itself really well. It's got a battery under the boots, not a particularly big battery, and that's to keep weight down because you don't want to necessarily just add weight because then you obviously affect your fuel consumption. Now, hybrid tech for Toyota is really, really ingrained in their brand philosophy. In fact, the first Prius, the Toyota Prius, came out in 1994, 27 years ago. And it's obviously advanced since then. And underneath me is literally a Prius. And it's so great because now you get all the benefits of Prius tech, 27 years of development, in a car that doesn't look like a Prius. This is a win-win. They've nailed it. Now to help you understand what the car is doing at any point, there is a graphic permanently displayed on the infotainment system, which shows you where the energy is moving around the car and what's actually busy driving the wheels. If you click on it, you get a bigger display. And it's actually quite fun to watch this, you know, seeing what's actually driving the wheels, what's creating the forward motion. I quite like that. Now I hear you saying, Chiro, 
Aren't hybrids boring to drive? Aren't they slow? Well, in this case, no, because let me give you the power figures. Between the two motors, you have over 120 kilowatts and over 300 newton meters of torque. Now, not all of that power makes it to the front wheels because there is some drivetrain loss, but those are some healthy figures. I think you'll agree. So when you put your foot down, you need to get off the line quickly, say to cross an intersection, this thing jumps. You've got all that torque from zero RPM coming from the electric motor, aided by the petrol motor, and off you go. I would actually describe this as quite a sprightly car. It's not slow at all. Now, one of the biggest differences between driving an electric vehicle and an internal combustion engine is what's called brake regeneration. Now, you get the same thing in a hybrid vehicle. Essentially, what it does is when you're coasting, it uses your momentum, the drive coming through from the road, through the drivetrain, to spin the generator, which generates electricity, and shoves it into the battery. It's like free juice. It's free petrol. It's free power. Alternatively, if you don't have a generator, it would have just gone to waste. Now, you can flick between regeneration mode and no regeneration in most cars, but you have to go into the infotainment system, whereas Toyota have made it really nice and easy. Down here on your gear selector, below D, you've got the letter B, which stands for brake regeneration. And for instance, when you're coasting on the highway, you don't want regeneration. You want the car to be able to coast quickly so that you can better modulate the speed. Whereas around the city, you want it in regen so it can take advantage of all those times when you're slowing down. And what that does is it essentially makes your throttle pedal both your brake and your accelerator. Because as soon as you get off the throttle, the car is actually, it feels like it's braking. In fact, it turns on the brake lights for you. That's how much you're slowing down. And now I'm coming to a stop street. I'm not using any brakes at all. The car's generating electricity. I'm watching it go into the battery. And now we've come to a stop. Use a little bit of brakes and we're off again. So you essentially drive the car with one pedal, really. And that also adds to the sort of relaxing type of motoring that you're getting from a hybrid experience. I think when you're driving a hybrid, you sort of change your mindset a bit. You start to actually become very aware of your fuel consumption numbers and you start sort of driving. It almost becomes a game. You start driving so that you can get that number as low as possible. It sort of becomes a challenge. Now Toyota gave this car to us for about a month to use and myself and my colleague Hannes have pretty much been sharing it and we've both really really come to like this car a lot. It's a great daily driver. It's smooth, it's comfortable, it's pretty fast, it's very very efficient, it's very practical. I think it actually looks quite good. This new 11th generation Toyota is quite a looker in my opinion. I'm not sure how much more you could want from a daily driver. And yes, I know the Corolla Cross Hybrid is coming and it's basically the same price and I'm sure it's going to outsell this car 10 to 1. There really is a lot to be said for a good sedan and I think this is one of the better ones, especially at this price point. So I would like to use this opportunity to encourage South African motorists to remember the sedan, remember what it can offer you. Remember how they don't like to fall over as easily as SUVs. Remember how their boots are actually larger than SUVs. All of this makes for a great motoring companion. Right, thanks very much for watching. We have over 530 videos on the channel. I'm sure you'll find something that you like. Whack that like and subscribe button so you don't miss another video. And I'll catch you on the next one. Right, cheers. Thanks for watching. Pistol fingers. Thanks very much for watching. If you've just watched this video, but you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, you absolutely should do that immediately right now. Click the subscribe button. It's a good idea for a bunch of reasons, which I actually don't have really a lot of time to go into, but it's good. It's a good idea. Excellent. Thanks for watching. I said that already. Budget insurance. Affordable because you can't afford not to.